Cuba. Second one we obviously know is Florida, South Carolina. It's pretty much happening right now. So it's right near the Clellanville that we're seeing this landfall close to Georgetown, just northeast of Charleston. So just minutes away for the absolute landfall. It doesn't really matter about the conditions because the peak is happening right now. Peak surge, peak winds will be going on for the next couple of hours right along the shoreline. Then this will kick in high gear once it moves inland. So it's moving north at 14 miles per hour. So that's a slight change in the direction. Sustained winds at 85 miles per hour, 105 mile per hour gust possible with this. That's down five miles per hour from the previous update. The next advisory comes in at two o'clock. So we'll We'll keep you updated online as that rolls in. Here's the changes. It's a little bit further off towards the east. When I say it, I mean the center of circulation. That is going to keep the dirt out of the storm, the strongest side of the storm, just east of our area. The worst of the weather really we're going to see as far as storms go will be in the outer banks, eastern Carolinas, because it's much warmer than there. In the meantime, any rain that we have is just miserable, super cold. And this tropical storm warning will extend for the rest of the day. It goes until further notice, so likely overnight tonight when conditions calm down, we'll be dropping it off. So what does this mean for our area? It's already breezy. It has been all day long. Really what we're going to do is level things up a little bit. So we have sustained winds about 20 to 30 miles per hour for the rest of the day. We're soon going to have some gusts get up to 40 to 50 miles per hour. Right now we've been in that 30 to 35 mile per hour gust range. We'll jump up to that 40 to 50 mile per hour range as soon as we get in a little bit close to us. It's that center of circulation that's going to be the strongest. One thing that we're dialing back a little bit is the rainfall. We haven't had a lot so far. Seeing values anywhere from about a quarter to a half inch, but we haven't seen the heavy rain yet. We've seen rain rates at about a tenth of an inch per hour. Those are going to jump up to about a quarter to a half inch per hour here pretty shortly. Here is a busy map, but follow me here. All these numbers here are the predicted wind gusts, and then of course you have the radar in the background. Seeing the oranges on here, that represents about a quarter to a half inch per hour. So we're going to start to have those increased rain rates. This is spread through the afternoon. Notice the time in the upper right corner right here. Four o'clock, six o'clock, eight o'clock. That's where I think that we're seeing the heaviest rain. Once you get to about 10 o'clock, things are starting to dial back a little bit. On the back side of the system, dry air starts to move in. It's called the dry slot. That's going to kill out a lot of the rain. That's especially through the overnight and look at our wind gust by 10 o'clock only down to about 24 miles an hour. So it really we're heading into the heart of the beast as far as peak winds, peak rain. And that's also we're going to have maximum flood conditions as well. So not only do we have the tropical storm watch, which represents flooding, but we also have that flash flood watch as well. All you need is just one cell to sit there for a long time. Luckily, we don't have the th thunderstorm type rain that easily can jump up one to two inches per hour. Not going to have that. That's going to be in the eastern side of the state. As of this recording, about an inch of rain. This isn't a lot, so pre-soaking. But we don't need a lot of rain. We just need to saturate the soil a little bit. We have a lot of shallow rooted trees across Charlotte. All you need is a gust of about 35 miles per hour. So we already saw from Chloe Leshner a down tree in the Charlotte area. When I was doing traffic this morning, there was a down tree in Chester County. I think we're going to see more down trees as we progress to the day. And one tree limb to come down power lines could knock it out for hundreds of people. So power issues is a possibility. Also, watch for debris as you're out and about. And it's not a great weather day just because of how cold and the rain is in general. Here's the most recent future cast rainfall seeing anywhere from about an inch and a half to three inches for the rest of the day. Some areas could have a little bit more, but I think the heart of the heaviest rain is just a little bit further off towards the east. But this isn't a classic system. Usually it's much warmer. Well, instead, a front wrapped up around this and this is looking more like almost like a nor'easter type setup. But the surge of moisture where you're seeing the heaviest rain rates is centralized right around the center of circulation. This is jumping back in the Charlotte area, and that's also why we're looking at increased amount of rain as we continue through the day. But back to this. Ooh, 55 degrees when it rains is never good. But 77 degrees in Cape Hatteras is significant because that's a little bit more unstable. So any severe weather that we have is not going to be here close to home. You have a low to a medium threat from Raleigh to Wilmington. That also means an up tornado potential. Whenever you have a land falling tropical system, there's a lot of wind shear. That's a twist of the atmosphere. So it's really this area here in 5% that has a chance for a quick spin up tornado. 5% doesn't seem 
like that much, but really put it as, say if there's 20 thunderstorms, one of those would have the chance to be tornadic. So we're keep an eye on that. We've already seen a tornado warning around Wilmington. Again, not affecting us. We're way too cold for any severe weather. So one more look at it. Hurricane Ian, widespread rain, really the Heaviest rain is starting to move back in. These are those heavier rain rates. So things are only getting worse from here. Stay safe, everyone. We'll continue to keep you updated with another update once the National Hurricane Center comes out with one as Ian is actively making.